The topic that is going to be discussed is about the radiographic interpretation of pulp and periapical diseases. Radiographic interpretation is a complex process which involves the detailed study of radiographic images and the ability to understand the meaning and to weight the various findings ultimately contributing to the diagnosis. In an intraoral periapical radiograph, while interpreting a tooth, it is divided into coronal, crest bone where we can assess the alveolar crest, root and periapical region. First, let me give a brief introduction about the diseases of pulp. For pulpitis, whether acute or in chronic form, it does not have a radiographic diagnosis because pulpitis is an inflammation of pulp and we cannot see the inflammation on a radiograph. Now let's discuss a radiograph showing dental caries with pulpal involvement. The teeth that are completely seen are 3-5, 3-6 and 3-7 and partially seen 3-8. Here trabecula shows step ladder pattern which is a normal feature. The fault of the radiograph is elongation. The tooth of interest here is 3-6. In the crown portion, there is ill-defined radial lucency in the disto-occlusal aspect which is involving the pulp. In the alveolar crest region, the alveolar crest is at 1.5 mm below the level of CAJ which is a normal feature. Generally, mandibular molar has two roots, mesial and distal root. Here, it has an intact lamina dura and no significant changes detected in the periapical region. These radiographic features are suggestive of dental caries with pulpal involvement. And now let's have a short discussion about the disease of periapical region. First, apical periodontitis which can be in either acute or in chronic form. In chronic form, it is also called as periapical granuloma. Secondly, periapical abscess again can be in either acute or in chronic form. Then periapical cyst and lastly condensing ostitis. And now let's discuss the second intraoral periapical radiograph which shows a case of acute apical periodontitis. The teeth that are completely seen are 4-5, 4-6 and 4-7 and partially seen 4-4 and 4-8. The anatomical landmarks that are present in the radiograph are external oblique ridge and submandibular fossa. And the radiographic fault is error in the film placement because the occlusal plane here appears oblique which should have been horizontal. In the crown portion, there is ill-defined radiolucency present in the occlusal aspect of 4-6, which is involving enamel, dentin and approaching the pulp, which is suggestive of dental caries. In the root portion, there is widening of pedial space, which is periodontal ligament space. It is seen in the apical one-third of mesial root of 4-6. These radiographic features are suggestive of dental caries with acute apical periodontitis in relation to 4-6. Now let's discuss another intraoral periapical radiograph showing chronic apical periodontitis which can also be called as periapical granuloma. It's only a radiographic diagnosis and never a clinical diagnosis because it can be identified only based upon the radiographic size of the periapical lesion. Here, a well-defined coronal radio opacity is seen involving enamel, dentin and approaching the pulp which is suggestive of metallic restorative material. Alveolar crest is at 1.5 mm below the level of CEJ. Root portion shows loss of lamina dura all around the root surface. In the periapical region, well-defined radiolucency which is of size less than 1.6 cm and that is not lined by a radio-opaque border which is suggestive of infected periapical granuloma. Now let's have a quick discussion about the borders surrounding the periapical lesion. Sclerotic border, it's a wide radio-opaque border of reactive bone that usually is not uniform in width whereas Corticated border is a thin, fairly uniform radio-opaque line of reactive bone at the periphery of the lesion. If the lesion present with loss of border, it is suggestive of infected periapical lesion. The next case that we are going to discuss is chronic periapical abscess. Here, there is ill-defined periapical radial lucency involving the distal root of 3-6 and this is the significant feature of chronic periapical abscess. Here, acute periapical abscess has not been discussed because except for slight thickening of the periodontal ligament space, there is usually no radiographic evidence of its presence. And now let me explain about another radiograph which is a case of periapical cyst. 
here there is periapical radiolucency which is measuring greater than 1.6 cm and lined by a corticated border suggestive of periapical cyst. And at last let us discuss about condensing ostitis. The anatomical landmarks that are present here are inferior alveolar canal, external oblique ridge and submandibular fossa. The tooth of interest is 46. In the root portion, there is uniform widening of pedial space surrounded by ill-defined radio opacity are seen. These features are suggestive of condensing ostitis. Thank you.